Welcome back to Romance Demic. Are there any birds in this part? Well, maybe in the background of a couple's... Uh oh, you mean the fake things? Yeah, they're all up in this. <laughs> Notice James Wen is a little formulaic, so obviously it continues as a romance through the whole thing. Just kidding, the birds attack halfway through. Yeah, but it's different this time because last time they attacked because of global warming, but this time it's because of global warming. However, last time after the hotel sex scene, the birds just attacked out of nowhere, but this time after the hotel sex scene, there was red rain that resurrected the ancient eagles and vultures from the Dr. Bridge tar pit because of global warming! What, was she on her period or something? <laughs> okay, see if you can follow us on this one. James Wen was watching the movie The Reanimator, right? And that movie has green goo that brings people back from the dead. So obviously, if you change that goo to red rain and take away the plot and all reasoning and also bring back prehistoric birds Prehistoric birds! Yeah, that, and also cavemen, then it's like the same thing! This is really what happened. James Wynn says this in the commentary a lot. And seriously, they adopted Tony? <laughs> <laughs> they adopted him! <laughs> I don't know if you'll notice this, but that red rain isn't really happening! <gasps> I know. But look at the terror on these people's faces in the background as they... casually go on with mundane tasks. Truly, this is the end times. <laughs> You remember how all the exploding birds died last time and that's why they have to be resurrected by global warming color change rain? These are different birds! Oh, right. It'd be silly if the already established combustible birds returned. I mean, after all, global warming was over for them when Rod and company locked themselves in a van. Or doves told them to piss off. Something like that. Does global warming seriously make birds explode? Listen, buddy, all birds explode. That's just fact. Whoa, some of those birds have been itching to get out of that tower for a while. Just look at them. I mean, if you can actually catch them for like the two frames they appear on screen. Hey, look, it's happening here too. What the? <laughs> Must have been caused by the polar vortex. Tapical. And no matter what time period the birds come from, they never forget hover mode. To love somebody is to want to be with that person. Forever. Forever? Ah, the Julie and Jack George Lucas special edition really fixed all the problems they had with the original. Now it's in an echoey gold curtain room. Meet me. Where? Golden Curtain Room! To love somebody is to want to be- <laughs> Forever? What the- Global uh, Warming did this! This doesn't have to do with anything! Ka-ka! 
Quick, grab a hanger! No, oh. Umbrella is the new hanger. No. Yeah, that's apparently what James Wen wanted. Umbrellas are the new thing for this one! I never would have got that if I didn't hear them say it. James Wen had new, improved birds animated for this, and he still managed to clip the wings when they left the work area. Hey, did you know that birds are comprised of nothing but blood? James Wen knows. Well, when they aren't just filled with gasoline. That's some security team they have there. Julian James Jack Redux is a top secret confidential film. They don't want their movie magic getting out. You know, I can't help but feel there's something slightly off here. Did we get an explanation for this? But of course, prehistoric eagles and vultures are much larger than the present day. Oh! Natalie, give me your gun. Seriously, you're a terrible shot. Bill, take this. It's okay. Here, give this to Brad. What? Seriously? He's drunk and he's got his hat over his eyes. It's okay. Here, give this to Brad. What? Aww. What are you gonna wear? I'm not too sure yet. I was thinking about borrowing something from you. Wow, they really stopped trying with the Halloween movies, didn't they? Still better than Halloween 6, The Curse of Paul Rudd. Look, he's teamed up with the birds! Global warming! Dead. This didn't happen in the reanimator at all! What the hell was I smoking? So it looks like Chesty LaRue here is gonna make it, but then Rod shoots her. Oh, shit. I had to. The global warming got to her. You all saw it. It's no secret that James Wen tends to borrow from other films in his pictures, and I think it's obvious what movie the Birdemic franchise brings to mind. The Bird? Jaws! So voila! Here's where the master of romantic thrillers blew a good part of his budget on this film, and boy, does it ever show that he's on the stupid Jaws set! But look, the Amity Island sign! Worth it! Plus, James Wen got to say he's the first production to actually bother filming on this set since Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> It's just used for tours now, which means in the few hours they had to shoot, the cast and crew constantly had to stop and wait for tour buses to go through. Movie magic! Speaking of movie magic, James Wen only had a couple of death animations going on, so prepare to see that same vulture blow in half at least 17 more times. So apparently Alan Baugh really wanted to kick more ass in this film, so he actually trained for this. And look, man, it's cool you took the time and effort to do that, but they're birds. You're gonna karate kick the birds? No, he's gonna karate kick the camera. It deserves it. Look at how crappy those shots are. That bird is just upside down. That's one dopey looking bird. Hey, you notice how they all look like flying corgis from the back? E I don't respect no one. I'm gonna eat my poop. Hey, Global Warming made these birds throw Sunny D and dry ice at the actors too. Luckily, if you have green shirt main character powers, you have immunity from being killed. Sucks to be you, Extra! This is pretty much the movie. Going from set to set and saving absolutely no one. Hey, Natalie, let's check in on your mom. <laughs> Just kidding. I really like retirement. Help! Help me! Don't worry, we'll save you. Hey, is that a gray shirt? Die, bitch. Ugh, my blood is on your hands! <laughs> Watch out, things are about to get super dramatic. Quick, see if anyone's still left alive. I already checked. Everyone is dead. <laughs> Don't worry, she used up all her emotional capacity there. She's on empty the rest of the film. That gives Rod more time to shine. Really? Damn it! And even more birds had died in a small northern coastal California town called Half Moon Bay. 
Hudson Bay. Which, you know, by the way, we were at and fought the birds there. <laughs> Just kidding. Half Moon Bay says it all. It's some scenes like this that make me think James Wynn wrote a version of this script that didn't include Rod or Natalie, as it seems like this is a line to set up a reference to the first film without actually having the same characters there. That and their only response is... I think James Wen just genuinely does not know how to write a film that doesn't start with some Gary Stu self-insert falling in love with a blonde woman, and he already did that with Rod and Natalie. I don't know where to go next with them. I've either got killed by birds or stuck in Windows 95 forever. I don't know how to write character development. And what's even stranger is the rain in Half Moon Bay had turned red. Mm-hmm. Remember when that happened in the first Birdemic? Oh, yeah! A day without red rain is a day wasted, man. Strange and weird things are happening in the environment right now. Guys, can we just change the subject? Jaws happens to be one of my favorite movies. Hey, we need to talk about more important things, like Jaws being my favorite movie. Well, I see how that's relevant. Jaws set. Uh... Are you really worried about the movies right now? Yeah, seriously. Why not? I mean, the birds are attacking us. I feel like I'm in a movie. <clears throat> in fact, my next script will be about birds attacking Hollywood. I can direct it. Sure, if you can find a producer to option my script. You know what? It could be just as big as the Jaws franchise. Yeah. Or maybe as big as Saw or Paranormal Activity franchise. Yeah, let's just pause the plot completely so James Wen can masturbate for a while. <laughs> What's this about? Well, the Birdemic uh, franchise. Oh, now it makes sense. Help! Get me out of here! Hey guys, somebody's in the cabin. Huh? Huh? Hey, wait! Oh boy, I was just thinking we needed a superfluous character too stupid to even figure out how to open a door to round out the cast. And I survived just by hiding in this cabin. What is your name? Jessica. I'm Will and I'm a screenwriter. Can you feel the love tonight? <laughs> A few years ago, Rod and I were attacked in a small town called Half Moon Bay. Guys, can we just change the subject? Screenwriter. Franchise. It might be global warming. It has to be global warming. Did you know that? Global warming. Well, I'm glad it was worth bringing up that this happened to them before, eventually. But anyway, never mentioned again. James Wen got better, did he? Shots of the beginning look cool. Those looked better? Global warming warped them. What? You're right, it has to be global warming. Hey, I know you. You're that tree hugger. Yes. We met in the forest. Yes. But I thought uh, that you would never leave the forest. Yeah, but... After we spoke that day, there was a forest fire that burned and destroyed everything. Uh, yeah, we knew about that. We just left you for dead. So did you want to hear what happened to the tree hugger during the events of the first movie? Well, too bad! Here it is! <laughs> I SAVED MY WORG! Hey, you're that crazy man who lives in a picture! <laughs> that's how I met Annie. Harrowing. Thank God we got to find out what happened. At least we know it's the same fire. I mean, it still disappears during fades. Now the tree hugger and his wife have a TV show. I guess that got ruined by global warming too, but you know, that happened. He's not worried about that. What he's worried about is the spruce bark field. No! Don't save me! Save the beetles! Looks like Tree Hugger abandoned his post, boys. We can finally process that tree of his. You monster. You know where that comes from? Toilet paper is made from trees. That is it. I am gonna stop wiping my ass right now.
In fact, we haven't used toilet paper in many years. Oh, I'm glad they're using outtakes with visible crew members to the side to make sure we get our anti-poop wiper message. Are you two aware that the eagles and vultures are attacking? Yes, but they don't seem to bother us. Hey, didn't we learn this the first time around? And didn't I sell soul panels? Wasn't that worth anything to those bastards? <laughs> I hear a mountain lion. Check it, guys. This huge budget could finally cover the cost of the RV James Wen always wanted. Can you imagine Birdemic 1 if it had an RV in it? It'd be like night and day! Look! They're leaving! Vans are just too damaging to the environment. That's it. I'm getting myself an RV that is more environmentally friendly. <laughs> Get the Beatles into the RV! You can hardly tell he's just filming from the back of another vehicle really improved. <laughs> Shut up and get in the RV, Grimace. Anyway, apparently they zoomed in a little bit and stopped there. But what looks better, having it slightly blurrier or leaving that stupid tire in the shot? Look, this is a professional film. They'd never put blurry shots into this. Yeah, good idea. Wait, are they dead? Let's go see if there's any survivors. Apparently this scene was originally written with bazookas because James Wen doesn't know the difference between a bazooka and an Uzi. They even got bazooka props and everything and he didn't use them. That would have been awesome. Boo on you, James. The only thing better than the stupid birds being in a scene is the stupid birds not being in a scene. <laughs> Let's fix this. Holy shit. <laughs> hey look, there's someone laying on the ground in front of the wiki. Let's go check it out. Gee, I wonder what that could possibly mean. Fuck, we didn't expect that. Burn in hell, you theater assholes! Yeah, we'll try to save everyone, except that scum! Hey Rod, I know the shortcut through the cemetery. Yeah, that's a great idea. Was that Rod trying to be sarcastic? You never know with him. I guess I wouldn't know since I don't live there, but please, everyone in Hollywood, enlighten me on the great graveyard shortcut you have. It's gotta be legit. Look at all the ground they're gaining on the people blowing past them. Thanks. Hey look, there's some people over there. We should stop and help them. Never mind the global warming rain or the fact they just popped out of the ground and are decaying. They're worth helping because they aren't theater scum. They're zombies. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> Everyone goes into action mode here, except Rod, who seems to have forgotten his karate moves when they'd actually be useful. Good thing they took that gun away from Natalie earlier, huh? <laughs> and Cowgirl dies because she was sick in real life. Oh, and by the way, she shit herself as she was dying! Oh boy! Zombies and prehistoric birds! This is getting exciting! <laughs> They're never seen again. Well, the zombie portion of the film took up about two and a half minutes of your lives. You're welcome. We should have brought Jessica with us. No, she's dead. She was bitten by that zombie. We would have brought her, she would have infected all of us. Yeah, well, he's right. Oh, I'm gonna kill myself. Okay, I'm over. The zombies killed Jessica. Damn it! Who cares? Are the Beatles okay? Oh no, clear rain! That's super global war- oh, okay, it's gone. Hey, we should go in that zoo. There might be people in there.
It's the one spot guaranteed to be bird free. After that, let's cook a fish on the beach. Prehistoric fish. We can defend ourselves. We have guns. Thanks. What if the animals try to attack us? We can defend ourselves. We have guns. Hey, you know, it's only a bird getting. Why don't we park a couple blocks away from everywhere that we're going? Where did the birds come from? <laughs> Are you aware that the birds are attacking people? Yes, but they do not attack us. They are my friends. Friends? Yes, because I understand why they are attacking. Why? Because all the animals in the zoo are getting sick from disease. I think global warming might have something to do with it. That first conclusion I come to, boy am I dumb. It has to be global warming. Is there any way to stop the birds attack? She is just gone at this point. There is no turning back. Chippy Hedron sure missed out by not playing the zookeeper here. And to think she could have starred in Birdemic 2 as well. What? We all try to live a greener lifestyle. A greener lifestyle? You mean like wearing green shirts? Shut up, Uncle Ogrimacy. We're learning important things like living eco-friendly will protect you from the birds. Seems familiar. Oh well, back to the gas-guzzling RV. <laughs> Add the beetles to the zoo! Guys, this is the road. We've got to get away from the safe haven from the birds. Immediately, immediately after they step foot outside the zoo, they attack. I feel like there's somewhere safer we could go, but where? Shit, I'm a black shirt. I'm fucked. Ah, uh, ew, it's really muddy water. I'll just die on this box. Aw, oh, two birds, double score! And another giant, tiny, prehistoric bird! From now on, Bill, I'm doing the driving. We've been on the road for ten minutes, Rod, I know! It wasn't the animals that killed Dustin, it was those damn birds! Try to stay with us here, Bill. Birds are animals. What? <laughs> But aw fuck, we gotta tie up this loose end. What happened with those dumbass cavemen? Hey Rod, look, there's some people right there. We should stop and see if they need any help. Okay. Let me drive really far up ahead first. But will Rod have the courage to take on his reanimated best friend, Rick? <laughs> God, they're fighting. And now we see the glorious caveman sight. Just kidding, it's over. Hey, write down that license plate. They blurred it. Motherfuck. And they park in the exact same spot. They literally just drove in a circle. James, you really think that looks good? Well, I think from a distance, you know? Then the building switches sides, then disappears. Gots to be global warming, yo. Damn, we're out of gas. Well look, there's a hotel up there. Maybe they have some gas. Yeah, seems like the place to look. They stop at a Pasadena Inn. Don't worry, you won't miss it. They only hold the establishing shot for a million years. And now, that's not me looping this footage over and over. That's the way it is on the film. Very important to do and seamless. Come on, guys, this is fun! Now it's time for an ice cold Pepsi Coke! <laughs> that's, that's a pretty funny joke. Yeah, but it wasn't meant as a joke. They don't even have the same brands in the next shot. It's just more not Pepsi products. Here's the Heps. You've got a Pepsi machine, but the producer is friends with the Coke people. You've got two solutions. Fill the machine with every brand but Pepsi, or have the machine go take a shit. You decide. The Eagles killed Pepsi. Really? Damn it. Or maybe he could have just not shown the vending machine, or just done a really clever editing trick. I hear a mountain lion. <laughs> oh 
shit, a real emotion, run! <laughs> Those eagles are no match for our infinite ammo cheat. Guns. You know what really grinds my gears? The screenwriter doesn't even fall into the pool. A crew guy had to do it for him. Let's face it, Birdemic 2 is ruined. <laughs> So it turns out all the prehistoric birds wanted to end global warming was to kill a screenwriter and rip off the ending of Sunset Boulevard. Didn't see that coming. And just to one-up the ending of the first Birdemic, we get a two-minute shot of the birds flying away. Good job, jeans. Let's sum this up. Go. Well, I... Too slow. Birdemic 2 isn't quite as good as Birdemic 1 for me. It's still quite funny in parts, but it's amazing how the first Birdemic felt like two movies and the second one barely feels like one. It's very sporadic, introducing new elements almost every other scene just to be never brought up again, and then it just stops. I swear, despite watching this several times, the ending just always sneaks up on me because I always forget there really isn't one. Just another damn Sunset Boulevard reference. I enjoyed the movie for being slightly self-aware because it makes it a different type of movie, but it's definitely a little off Pudding, trying to figure out what's real and what's staged. There are clear jokes added to the script, such as a running gag where they stop to say everyone's dead, but there are other things that are less clear unless you watch the commentary. A lot of it is beat for beat the same thing as the first movie, which means it's a little bit repetitious. But you can tell some of the actors are having fun with this, and Whitney Moore's give no shit performance is a big highlight for me. I also kind of love that the movie is James Wen's love letter to himself. It's worth the watch if you enjoyed the first one. One of the big factors about this film is knowing that James Wynn didn't go into it trying to purposely make a bad movie. This is him still trying to make a genuine romantic thriller. Everything you think was added to this as a gag like zombies, cavemen, and a giant jumbo jellyfish weren't, which is just kind of amazing. Shit, we left that brat guy by the bridge. Let's save him. Hey assholes, thanks for leaving me to go finish your review. Well don't worry, we learned an important lesson about surviving the Birdemic. Wearing green shirts! Well that's just fantastic. <laughs> Fuck that! Hey buddies, what are we pretending to look at? Brad Moon Bay? I thought you were dead! I <laughs> know, that was the cinema snob, because I was wearing different glasses. Well, I guess that cancels your show forever because it's in your continuity now. <laughs> <laughs>
it. That's stupid.